All right, so hello, welcome, hola, namaste. Thank you all for joining me today for my masterclass. Um, how can you send love to your body parts to help healing? So before I start, I just wanted to um, share with you a little bit about myself, for those who are joining for the first time especially. So my name is Rajya. I am uh, in the United Kingdom, in the eastern part of England, and um, I am a receiver, a receiver and a transmitter of divine messages. So I started on my journey of self-discovery and self-healing about 10, 11 years ago. And uh, I started uh, receiving a lot of messages and connecting to the divine realm and receiving knowledge that was helpful for myself and my own journey. And then I was guided to share this knowledge, this whatever that I receive with the others. And so that's what I do. I share whatever that I receive. So when I speak, um, I do not speak as Raja because this is just the physical body and the physical name given to the physical body. So I disengage myself, detach myself from my physical and I become the soul that I am. And when I become the soul that I am, I am connected to the divine, I am connected to the divine knowledge, the source of all knowledge in the universe. And so that's what I share. So I as Raja do not know anything, but I as a soul, when I connect with the divine, with the divine realm, I receive everything that I ask for and I want to know. And that's what I share. So whenever I share, um, a lot of times you'll find that my eyes are closed as well. Um, so I just talk whatever comes through to me. So when I share the knowledge that I receive, um, sometimes you would find that it's, uh, there's a lot of similarity or some similarity with other teachers that you may have heard or some other teachings that you may have read. And that's because we all receive the same knowledge from the same source. There's only one source of all knowledge. So that's what I share. And I'm really happy to see you all here. I'm really happy to meet you all today and um, and before we start I'll just quickly share my Facebook group if you are on Facebook um, where is my share screen share screen yeah so if you are on Facebook feel free to join my group soul expansion network so that I know some of you are already there but those for those who are new Feel free to join this group and um, so that we can share some more beautiful energies. And um, also, if you like the knowledge that I share, um, then you can find me on YouTube as well. Um, that's my YouTube channel. So you can find me there. And um, yeah, so let's... Um, start with this class so before we go into how to do it let's get into why we do the things we do and what happens to us to our body so did you know that when um, we suffer with pain or any kind of suffering in the body or in our lives but especially in our body we send the energies of anger or worry or fear so what happens is when we are suffering our uh, immediate reaction and the reason why we do that is for example if you get diagnosed with something let's say and then your immediate reaction is in your immediate emotional reaction is worry that oh my god how am i going to deal with this or what am i going to do or what's going to happen to my body, you know, how it's going to progress. So those are the immediate emotional reactions we have when we have pain in the body. So whether we get diagnosed with a chronic condition or it's just a pain that we've got because of an injury we've had or um, whatever reasons. So when we have these emotional reactions, these automatic emotional reactions, what happens is, wh why do we have these automatic emotional reactions? So I'll speak a little bit about that first. So 
because we have not been trained, we have not been taught, we have not learned, we have not learned in our schooling systems, we have not learned how to react in a more conscious way. So we go on to an automatic default mode and the default mode is that of a lower vibrating energy. So some people would call it negative and positive energy. So instead of using negative and positive, I prefer to use the vibrational language, which is higher frequency and lower frequency. So higher frequencies are the ones that give us the high and that's why the higher frequencies you know when we are sharing love when we're sharing joy when we're sharing when we're feeling gratitude and appreciation and we're forgiving all of these beautiful um, emotions have beautiful frequency beautiful vibrational frequencies and these are high vibrating frequencies that make us feel good because it creates that happy chemicals in our body. It makes us feel light. It makes us, takes us in that happy, dancey, floaty place. And we are meant to be that. By design, we are meant to be that. We are naturally meant to be happy all the time, joyful all the time, feeling good all the time, forgiving all the time, dancing, singing, enjoying life all the time. That's what we are meant to be by design. But we like to complicate things, so we create things for ourselves that are probably not so happy and not so joyful. Whether we know it or not, we are responsible for ourselves, whatever it is we create. So when I started on my self-discovery journey, so I, I will share with you a little bit about myself, about my own journey, how I got into this. So prior to this, I was um, suffering with a lot of... Um, physical conditions, physical, mental and emotional. So I was diagnosed with a lot of conditions such as, you know, hypothyroid, fibromyalgia and IBS and migraine and insomnia and panic attacks and depression. So uh, loads of diagnosis. And um, I was not feeling any better. So there was, came a point in my life where I said, this is not working. I need to do something about it. What can I do? And that's when the seeking started. And that changed my life. The moment I started asking and I started connecting with the divine, I started receiving this knowledge as to how I can help, myse help myself. But as I started going into this journey, I realized that I unknowingly created all the pain in myself, whether it was in my life or in my body, I created myself unknowingly and this was a big awakening for me and before that I said oh my goodness I was such a fool I didn't know what I was doing so we if we live as we have been living as civilization humans have been living in such a way that we have been in the survival mode for a long time where we have just been collecting food and you know, working for food and we're still doing that. Many of us are still doing that. Um, we go out to earn money so that we can feed ourselves and feed our family, etc. So we, when we remain in the survival mode, we cannot do anything else. And therefore, we are not paying attention to ourselves. We're not taking the time out to pay attention to ourselves, to bring our awareness to ourselves. What is it that I am thinking? What is it that I'm feeling in my body? And so this is what I'm going to focus on to bring our awareness to ourselves. How can we do that? And I will share some practical tips with you on how you can do that. So when I say that we unknowingly, unconsciously, we create the pain in ourselves, in our body, in our lives. And so when we take responsibility for that, that, okay, this pain that I have in my body, Whatever this condition that I've been diagnosed with or this pain that I have in my life, I didn't know that I had created it. And when, I, when you say this at that point, you do not even have to know how you did it. I didn't know how I did it when I said that. I didn't even know how I did it. I didn't know how I was responsible for my own pain. But I just said it. I said it anyway. I said it out loud to the universe that, okay, whatever it is, if I create my own reality then I have created this unknowingly. I don't know how I did it, but I created it unknowingly. 
So when I started to declare, make that declaration to the universe, that's when things started to change for me. Things started to shift and somehow life opened up. Evidence is for me to show to myself that, right, this is what I was doing. I was showing so much anger. I was sending so much anger to myself, so much anger to myself. So whenever I felt unwell and whatever symptoms I had in my body, I didn't know that I was sending anger to my body. For example, when I was in pain because of fibromyalgia, and I didn't realize that every time I had the pain in my body and I was aching, my body was going aches and pains, and I was just sending a lot of anger to myself. And then sometimes I would hear about a certain condition from some other people, and then I would react with fear that, oh my God, what if I get it? What if I catch it? And I think that is an energy which is very prevalent at the moment that a lot of people catch on to the fear information that is around. And so we send that fear energy into ourselves. So I realized that I was sending so much anger to my body pain. I was sending so much anger to myself. And so I, at that time, I still didn't know how to change that, how to not send um, anger or how to send love even. I didn't know how to do that. And it took me a long time. It took me years, many years to learn this. And that's why I want to share with people so that we can learn this quicker, that we don't have to stay in pain for a long time. Yes, pain may come, but that's all right. Pain comes to us for a reason to teach us a beautiful lesson. And that's what I learned in my journey that whatever pain that I had was, had come into my, into my body, into my experience to teach me this beautiful lesson that I have to let go of that anger. I have to let go of that worry, that fear and send love to myself, to my body and to everybody around. And when you become that love yourself, you are automatically generating love around you and you're generating love to the planet. And that's how you start to heal. And so I got onto my healing journey. Um, yes, and it takes time and practice to do this. It doesn't happen instantly. Yes, it can happen instantly. It can happen instantly. It happens for some people. But it takes practice. It takes time. And it's the more we practice it every day and the better we get. And that's how we get into this beautiful journey as we keep unfolding so this is an invitation for everybody for you all beautiful souls today that have joined me to be on this journey to allow yourselves to open to unfold for this magic to happen so that we can all ascend into the beings that we are the light beings that we are to step into the golden age to step into the golden era where everyone is joyful, where everyone is well, where there is no pain, where there's no suffering, where healing happens automatically and where everyone is sharing in love and joy. And that's the place that we are stepping into. That's what we are working towards. That's what we are walking into. So um, how do you do this? How do you bring your awareness to your body part? So I want to practice a little bit with you all. So if you have um, certain pain in your body right now, so I would like you to bring your awareness. So how do you do that? Is close your eyes and just focus on your breath, gentle breath. And just bring your awareness to that pain, that part of your body which is in pain. And just think of that word, whatever that you have been describing that pain with, because we tend to give it names, right? Like we're, we're diagnosed with a certain symptom, with a certain name, so we give it a name. So if you have given it a name already, think of that. And then see what emotion emerges. What is the emotion that comes up in your mind? What is the first word that comes to you? So think of that right now as a little exercise. So I'll give you 
minute or two to just do that, to just connect to your pain. What is the word that comes to you straight away? An emotional word. And you can type into the chat if you would like to share what is the word that came to you when you were thinking of your pain. Um, if there's any word that came to you, then um, feel free to share in the chat if you would like to. Hurt, annoying, nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember how annoyed I used to get. <laughs> Worry, yeah. Worry, fear, yeah, stuck, distress, yeah, that's it, sadness, hopeless, fear, stupid, cut down. Excellent. Disappointment in self, anger, yeah, that's what we do, that's what we do, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you all for sharing those powerful words. Yeah, that's what we tend to do. And I did that too for many years. I did that too. So I completely understand where you're coming from. Yeah, anger and frustrating and annoyed and hopeless and sadness. So, um, yeah, frustration. Yes. So we want to feel well because that is our natural self. Our natural state of being is that we are supposed to be light. We are supposed to be happy, joyful all the time. So when we do not feel that way, our body, our being knows that limited, yeah, knows that we are not where we are. Um, yeah, so I don't know who is not muted. Um, I can see that everyone is muted. Okay, maybe Leonore is not muted. I'm going to mute her. Yeah, all right. So yes, a lot of um, very powerful words coming in. Thank you all for sharing that. So this is exactly what we do. When we live on a default mode, on a heavier energy default mode so because we've never been taught how to be in a higher vibrating default mode we tend to function in a negative what we call negative in a lower frequency default mode so what happens is this is exactly what happens as you're seeing all the words here disappointment and frustration and anger etc fear and worries all of that so the moment we have pain in our body, we get hurt, we get annoyed, we get angry, we have fear because we always jump to the most catastrophic or most um, worst case scenario that we like to jump into that, oh my God, this is so horrible or this is so painful or what's going to happen to me or how are we ever going to come out of it? And especially now, how are we going to come out of this for humanity? So we tend to jump into that. But how do we jump out of that mode? and get into a higher vibrating automatic mode and that's what we want to learn as we are becoming a more higher vibrational frequency beings as we're shifting from the suffering beings to becoming healer beings that each one of us each one of us is a healer there's nothing special about me about somebody about you about any great healer great spiritual teacher everybody is a healer all of us each one of us we all have the inbuilt ability to fix ourselves to restore our body to heal ourselves and we don't have to do anything i don't have to do anything you don't have to do anything and that's the greatest part about it because when when i think that I have to do it. I remember when I used to do it, when I thought I had to do it, it was very stressful for me. Because you think, oh my goodness, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> you know, so we get stressed out. So we don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. So how does it happen? How does the healing happen then? Our body is designed 
in such a way that it has the ability to restore itself, every part of our body. So when I started receiving this knowledge, I was shown by the divine realm. I was shown by my guides how it actually happens. So our body, and I'm going to share it with you today, our body is a super duper technology. So the things that we see, such as our phones or you know technology computers that we see and we think that we, are, we have such high technology right now, in comparison to the beings that we are, the body that we have, this technology that we see on the outside is nothing compared to that. Human beings, we still do not know the full potential of our bodies yet. We still do not know. As advanced as we think we are, we still have a lot to learn. And all of this work that we are doing, that each one of us is playing a part in taking this little step of healing ourselves or helping ourselves towards that journey of healing. We are playing that part in this evolution of humans, of humankind. So the body is, our body, the human body is a super duper technology. Every part of the body has the ability to restore itself. It is when we do not allow that healing to happen. And why, we, why do we stop ourselves? Because of this, because of the worry, because of the frustration, because of the anger, because of the fear, because of the disappointment, because of the beating ourselves up, all of that. Because all of these energies, all of the words that you all have shared here beautifully, these are all lower vibrating frequencies. And when we're talking in terms of frequencies, lower vibrating frequencies get stuck into our energy system. So for some of you who've already joined my chakra classes as well, as well, you know that I've talked a lot about this. Our body, we are all energy beings. We have energy flowing through us and to us all the time. And energy is meant to flow. Just like air, just like water, energy is meant to flow, flow, flow. When energy is flowing through us, life force energy is flowing through us, energy is constantly purifying our body. So we are just like a vessel. Our body is just a vessel. And we must allow this energy to purify us all the time. It's like a pressure washer. When water flows through, it cleanses, cleanses everything on its way. So it's a bit like that. When energy is flowing through us, it cleanses our entire system. Because Humans think that we think that we are just human bodies, but we are not. We are energy bodies. The physical is a very small part of it. So our energy body, when we allow the flow of energy to happen as it's meant to, then we're constantly flushing out. We're constantly cleaning out. And so nothing remains. Nothing is stagnant. And when nothing is stagnant, our bodies are purified and therefore the healing happens automatically. And the other thing that happens in our body is that, you know, when we get cut in our skin, for example, we have a cut. I don't do anything to heal that cut. You don't do anything to heal that cut. The healing happens automatically because our skin has the information, our tissues, our muscles, our bones, when we have a fracture. I don't do anything to heal the bones. You don't do anything to heal the bones. Doctors don't do anything to heal the bones. Healers don't do anything to heal the bones. The bones do the healing itself by joining up. It happens automatically. The heart pumps blood automatically. The lungs do the breathing automatically. Our digestive system works all the digestion process automatically. So our body has all this intelligence that has been created by design, by creation. The same knowledge that comes from the source, the same knowledge that is in the source, the same light that is in the source that has made us or that we are made of, we are made of the same source light. And we have the same intelligence in our body, each one of us. It is only because we've been staying in a survival mode, we, 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 
have progressed from being hunter-gatherers to becoming agricultural to becoming industrial but we are still a little bit stuck in um, the survival mode because we're still working to earn money so we can feed ourselves but when we step out of that and try to understand, learn to understand who we are. We are these powerful, super technology beings. And I was shown this really, really beautiful sight, which I'm going to share with you all. Is that when we have pain in the body, every single cell in our body, every single cell, because we have so many trillions of cells in our body, every single cell is a transmitter and a rece receiver. So it has like a beep, 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 beep transmission all the time. Your cells are speaking all the time. It's always transmitting. It's always receiving. What is it transmitting? So if you have a pain in your body that somebody has diagnosed it as something, that part of the body, when you're diagnosed and you put the fear into it and the worry into it and the anger into it, then the transmitter gets covered up by that heavier energy because all of these lower vibrating frequencies are very heavy it cannot flow they do not flow so they become stagnant and that's what we call as diseases as physical conditions in the body and then we got diagnosed with a certain name and then we get told that this is incurable for example in my case everything that i was diagnosed with was incurable so we get diagnosed, we get told that it is incurable and therefore it cannot be cured. Therefore, you have to live with it your entire life. And therefore, we then go down with that worry, with that fear, with that annoyance, with that frustration, with that hopelessness. And so the cells get wrapped up in these lower frequency energies and therefore we do not heal. And so I was shown that every single cell in our body have this, they are frequency transmitters. So they receive and they transmit. And so when something is wrong in your body, if you stepped out, you as in the physical you or ego as it is called in the spiritual terms, if you step out of the way, if you, if I, Raja, if you, Darlene, if you, Susan, if you, Ellen, if you, if you stepped out of the way and just allow that technology to happen on its own. So what do I mean by that? Is that if we do not give it any judgment, if we do not give it any label, any name, any lower vibrating emotional reaction or a negative reaction, as we call it, if we do not give it that and we just allow it to do its own thing, then the cells will transmit the message. It'll go beep, 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 beep into the universe to the source. Source will receive that message from you that, okay, that part of the body is saying beep, beep, beep. So that knows how to fix it from there. It's like a very high tech, um, system where you know when we have our computers down and we call up tech support so it's a bit like that but it's a very high tech tech support so um when we're sending out when we're allowing that message to go out then the tech support from up there from the source automatically starts to work in collaboration with your cell so when we do this, when we step out, when we step back, because we as humans and our limited brains with the limited knowledge that we have learned from this physical world, we tend to block that because we say that, oh my God, I cannot be fixed. Oh my God, this is going to be with me my whole life, etc., etc. So if you hear, you know, if you listen to some shamanic healers, and this is very much a shamanic practice where um, they will always say to you that it is better not to get diagnosed because if you're not diagnosed, you can heal straight away like this. And it is true. When we are diagnosed, it takes a lot longer to remove all of those layers that we had unknowingly covered it up with, covered up our own cells from transmitting the messages so that healing can happen. So how do we do that? What do we do? 
So this was a powerful message that came to me and it took me a long time for me to actually practice it. And I've been practicing it for a few years now that I am now able to share it with you after my own healing, that I can now share it with you so that everyone can go and get onto their healing journey and everyone can do this and practice this. And yes, we have to do it every day. We have to practice it regularly for us to understand this, to feel it, to feel that this is really happening. So we as human beings, the limited physical beings that we are, that we have become because of our environment, because of the limited educational systems that we've had, the limited um, medical systems that we've had, that we've developed. But yes, that's all good because that was part of our evolution. We had to go through those limitations in order to come to this point to know that we are limitless. We are unlimited beings. We are limitless. There is so much magic in us, in our body, in this world, in this entire universe and who we are is so powerful but for us to understand that we have to first make some mistakes because mistakes are beautiful lessons without mistakes we never learn so we had to make some mistakes we had to do some limited things and now we've come into this beautiful time in humanity in human history in the evolution of humanity i feel that this is such a beautiful time that we are now stepping into this ability of ourselves the limitless beings that we are, that we are learning, we're starting to know and see and starting to get into our healing journeys where um, 20 years ago, a lot of people were not doing this. 30 years ago, a lot of people were not doing this. And now today, so many people are having miraculous healings. So many wonderful teachers are teaching this. And so it is a beautiful time for us to step into this power, our power, our own power. Not the power driven by greed or ego, but just a very simple, pure divine power. And when it comes from that divine connection from the source, it is always about love. It is always about joy. It is always about peace. It is always about healing. And that's who we are. So we are just love, we are just joy, we are just peace, we are light. And that's what we are here for, to discover that, to find that in ourselves and to share that with others around us and to share that to the planet so that we can bring, we can light up all of these lights. And I see that all these lights being lit up, lighted up around the world like little beautiful stars and we're all connecting through this network that we're forming now. So how do we bring our awareness? And I've just um, had a beautiful response from you all about how to bring our awareness to what I'm sending to my pain. So when I'm sending those lower frequency, lower vibrating energies to myself and to that pain, then we are blocking our own path of healing. So then the question arises, how do I send love to myself? How do I send love to myself so that I can heal, so that my body can heal? So as I was saying earlier, that you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just step out of the way and allow that part of the body to do the transmission to the source and that healing will automatically happen. But for this to, to practice this, it takes a bit of time. Um, it doesn't happen so quickly. Yes, it can happen quickly. And some of you, for you, some of you, it may happen really quickly, but it took me a lot of time to practice. And so I'm going to share with you, how do you do that? How do you send love to your body parts? So. The first thing to do is whenever you have that pain come into your existence, let's say you're sitting at home or you're at work and you're suddenly reminded of your suffering, of your pain in your body and automatically default mode, you go to, oh, I'm so fed up with this or I'm really annoyed or angry, I, I'm really angry. So 
close your eyes straight away. As soon as you have the pain in your body, as soon as you are reminded of the pain in your body, or if you're taking a medication for that pain, um, just close your eyes for a moment and do that first practice that I just did with you. Bring your awareness. What is the word I'm using to myself? Bring your awareness to that word. It may be anger, it may be frustration, it may be hopelessness, it may be fear, whatever it is. Just bring your awareness to it and <clears> then <throat> just let it go. So give a big exhale through your mouth, all the way out of your belly. Long exhale. So when we do this exhale, we are releasing that lower vibrating frequency out of our system. So you're, when you're exhaling from your belly all the way long exhale out of your belly through your mouth, you are releasing that lower energy. Then next you have to replace it with a loving energy, with love. How do you do that? You gently touch that part of your body and some parts of our body maybe we cannot touch if we cannot reach that's okay you can touch wherever you can reach closest to it or you can just simply touch your heart so <clears throat> let's say it's your heart so just gently place your hands on your heart or if it's your shoulder or if it's your neck or if it's your head you're suffering from migraine or headache so whatever it is, whichever part of your body, gently touch, close your eyes and breathe very gently through your nose in, inhale through your nose very gently and exhale through your nose very gently and then you send love to that body part wherever you are feeling, wherever you are touching, <clears throat> you send love. So how do you send love? you may say. Sending love also takes practice. So it is your intention that will make it work. Because intention is like an instruction to that energy. So your love center is your heart center. We generate love from our heart center, which is in the center of your chest. So this is not the physical heart I'm talking about. This is your heart center, your heart chakra. So we generate a lot of love, we transmit, and this is the biggest energy center of the human body, of the human energy field. So this is a very powerful energy center for us to send healing to ourselves and to others, to the planet. So when you hold the intention that I want, and what is intention? Intention is just a wish, a desire, a want. So when you say, I want to heal. I want to help my body to heal. I want to send intention to this part of my body to heal. I want to help. I am not going to do the healing because I don't know how to do it. But I'm only sending love to help in that healing that the body is automatically doing itself. So that's all you've got to do. So your intention, our intention is an instruction to that energy, to that love energy. So when I hold an intention to send love to that body part, to send love to somebody else, it is my intention that's going to carry that energy to that body part or to that other person or to the planet. Because intention is like an inst instruction, it's a code of instruction where that energy is needed to go, where it's meant to go. So it's like um, if you're throwing a dart you aim at the board where it is that you want to, your dart to land before you throw it. So you aim. That's what intention is. You are wishing for the dart to hit that center, the, the bullseye point in the center. So that's what we do with intention. When I send my intention, when I hold my intention to send love to that part of the body, that's when the energy is being aimed at. This is where it will be going. So hold the intention of love. I want to send love to this part of your body, whatever it is. And you just hold your, keep your hand gently and touch. 
and keep breathing gently and say to yourself you can speak out loud you can speak in your mind but speaking out loud is better that I am sending love to my throat I'm sending love to my heart I'm sending love to my head so whichever part of your body you gently touch with your hand because our hands are the super healers we have various chakras here we have various information here lots of beep 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 beeps are going in our hands all the time lots of transmissions are happening all the time in our hands and when we're not aware of it we don't even know how to use this consciously so when you gently lay your hand on yourself whichever part of your body and you breathe gently and you hold your intention of sending love to that part of your body that's when you start to send love that's when you start to release all that energies that you've been holding on to those stupid and fear and hopeless and anger and frustration and annoyance all those energies that you've been holding you start to wash it away slowly and it may take some time if you've been holding anger for 10 years for five years for a year that energy may have been there for a bit longer which means it will take a bit longer to practice and wash away and yes it may not take long also it may just happen quite quickly instantly as well but the more we practice and you can incorporate this into your regular meditation practice so every morning when you sit for meditation every afternoon evening when you sit for meditation you can spend a few minutes at least a minimum of three minutes if you are able to spend five, nine minutes doing this, it's really good. But a minimum of three minutes will also help really well. So if you just practice this every day, sending love to your body parts, whichever part of your body. And then you can start to see the changes that will happen in your life. And slowly those energies that you've been, that have been stagnant in the body will start to get washed out and will start to flow. And then as you allow the energy to flow and flow regularly, that's when um, you will start to feel better and better and better. So that's what I wanted to share. And um, I will um, move on to the next se session of um, questions. So before we go on to the... Q&A section because we've done an hour almost an hour now I will give a quick um, one minute bio break and then we'll come back for some questions and answers I'll see you in a minute so this is the Q&A section and um, I'm going to ask you all to type in your questions in the chat box if you have any questions and I will try to get to everybody but because time is limited if I cannot then um, do email me your question or I, if I can save this uh, chat I, I'm not sure I hope I can um, but do email me your questions if I can't get to you and I will definitely reply to each and everybody but whoever I can um, get to I will reply so and the first question from Veronica, what about genetic illness? Yes, yes, very good, very interesting question and good question. Genetic, so genes. Again, as I was saying about earlier, that um, as part of our evolution, we have been um, developing our health system, our medical system, which is very good but it's still um, quite limited if you know the knowledge the source knowledge and the limitless uh, beings that we are so um, we are born with certain genes and yes in our genes we carry a lot of information not just of illness but a lot of information of how I look and how I feel and etc and so much memory is carried in our genes and so far um, I think we have been told that um, we cannot change what we're born with is in the genes 
but we are heading towards um, a time where we are realizing and there is new findings um, I'm sure some of you have come across new findings um, more information about our uh, genes that we can change it there's nothing such as unchangeable we can change it we can change every information that we have in our body because we are energy we're not fixed we're not physical although we see ourselves as this physical being this touchable feelable being and so it's um, a challenge for us to think that you know we can change this but if you become so evolved that you can even actually change your physical form because it's just energy if we can change energy we can change matter very easily so this physical that we see is a matter so if we can change energy everything can be changed and therefore the genes the genetic information that we have so how do we stop that how do we block ourselves is the question that we want to ask is that when i am told by somebody that it's in your genes you will have this um, so and so disease we have been given this name and we've been given this limiting information that I cannot change it because it's in your genes. The moment that information is fed into our system, that's the moment you're sending that limited energy to that part of your body. So genetic means we may get it, we may not get it, we don't have to have it. Yes, it may be a weakness in our point. So for example, if my mother suffered from XYZ, that may be a weakness in my genes and I have to know, okay, how can I improve this myself? So that's what we do. It may be a weakness, it does not have to be. But if it's a weakness as well, we can change it by allowing ourselves to open up to the energies of love and healing and by doing the same practice that I was saying that we do not want to cover ourselves with that limited knowledge, that limited information, limited information that is in your genes and therefore you cannot do anything about it or you cannot heal or you cannot fix, you cannot be fixed. That's the information, old information, old paradigm system. Let's push that away now for us to become this new human beings that we are this new light beings this new luminous beings that we are we have to push that old information away bring in new information what is it in this new information i have the power to change everything not because i know anything not because i'm great not because i'm special no just because by design we are all of that this information has been designed by the same creator, creation, nature, source, whatever you'd like to call it. And in that information, we are already coded to heal ourselves, to fix ourselves, the same way as the bones heal itself, the same way. So the genes can change, the DNA can change, and now we have new findings that we can even extend our telomeres so we can extend our life so the thing that we have now we think that if you're 90 years old people say oh you've had a long life no we are designed to live a lot longer we can live for hundreds of years and there's more and more information coming out of how um, yogis and monks and other people who've been practicing this how many years they've been living and they are still living and um, they're wonderful uh, there's wonderful information coming out now science is bringing out now with more evidence that we can do this so living for 70 years 80 years 90 years is old paradigm let's push that away living by limited knowledge of what your genes can do cannot do old information let's push that away open yourself to these limitless possibilities of love i do not have to be this i do not have to be that i allow my genes to do the transmission is doing that beep 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 let it beep let it transmit to the source let that let that communication happen between your cell your dna and the source let that naturally happen clean away anything that is blocking up anything that is stagnant there let it all purify let it cleanse away and then you allow that powerful wonderful limitless being that you are to come forward so um yeah, I will get to the next question. So I hope that has helped uh, Veronica. And the next question from Judy. What if we don't know body part ex example tiredness? Yeah, tiredness, fatigue. I will call it fatigue. 
So when we get extremely tired and we are fatigued, it only means that I used to be very fatigued as I was diagnosed with conditions that used to make me very tired, very fatigued. I know exactly how it feels to be very tired that you want to get up and do things, but you cannot, you can't even get out of bed. I was in a state where I couldn't even pull myself out of bed. So tiredness, fatigue. Fatigue only means um, anger, number one. So sometimes we're not even aware of what I'm sending to myself. So when we're really fatigued, it is a, uh, what should I say, a production of um, anger energy that we're sending to ourselves. So why am I angry then? So a lot of times if we don't pay attention, if we do not bring our awareness to ourselves, we're not even aware what is the energy I'm generating to myself and for myself. So what am I angry about even? So here's a practice you can, uh, a little practice you can try. So just close your eyes whenever you feel tired and do the same thing as I have said before to bring your awareness to your emotions. What am I feeling right now? I'm feeling really tired. What is the emotion you're feeling right now? The body may be tired, the mind may be tired. What is the emotion that I'm feeling right now? I'm feeling angry because I want to go and do something, but I'm tired, I cannot do it. Aha, there's your anger emotion. So what do you do? You breathe let it go and then you replace it with love so when it's tiredness it's always it always affects us around our neck our shoulders our upper back so it's nice to hold yourself in your heart you can hold gently touch yourself or put your hand on your heart or on your shoulders because this is a nice hug you can give yourself and also we tend to get aches and pains when we are fatigued around here so gently hold yourself and just send your intention and send that love to yourself. So anger also means, tiredness, fatigue also means that I am not listening to myself, my true self. Who is me? Who is this true self? The soul. So all the names that we give ourselves, Judy, Raja, Linda, Yoko, whatever names we give ourselves, is only an identification that the physical world has given. This has nothing to do with who I really am who you really are. So who you really are is the soul that you are. Your soul is calling out to you. Hey Judy, here I am. Come to me. Come to me. Hello. Listen. And when we don't know how to listen to that, we get angry because I don't know how to listen. I can hear somebody calling me, but I do not know how to listen. I used to get very angry with myself years ago. And I didn't know how I was, why I was angry even, but I would project my anger towards other people at that time. And then um, slowly I started to realize that this anger was within myself and therefore I had all this fatigue and this tiredness within me because of that. As I started to release that and I started to release all the fatigue and the tiredness from my body. So I hope that helps Judy. Thank you for your question. Suzanne, is there supporting practices to help the healing such as food, yoga, energy work? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. So um, whatever healing work we do, it has got to be all levels, all layers. So as I was talking about our energy bodies, so we are energy beings. We have multiple layers of energy bodies. We have our physical body, which is what we see and which is what most of us identify ourselves with. Then we have our mental body, we have our emotional body, we have our spiritual body. So we have layers of emotional bodies, what we in yogic um, knowledge we call it as um, subtle bodies. So energy bodies we have and all of these energy bodies, every, every body that we have, <laughs> so each, each one of us have many bodies. So. All of our layers, all of our bodies, we need to work at each layer. So for the physical body, yes, we need to eat a good diet, a clean diet. We do not want to be filling our body with junk and we need to drink clean water and water is very important. And I can talk a lot about water, but perhaps that's another masterclass we can do just on water because there's a lot to talk about water. So um, yeah, clean water clean food, what is it that I'm putting into my body? 
but not just the physical food that we're eating but how do how am i preparing this food what energy am i putting into this food when i'm preparing am i preparing this food with anger and frustration <laughs> and rushing around and stress you know so to be aware of all of that so that entirely is as i said could be another master class for that so what energy are we putting into the food that i'm eating the food that I'm preparing, what am I putting into my body, what physical food, and then what mental food, what am I thinking, what thoughts, what emotions, all of this, and yoga, movement of the body consciously. So you could do that through yogic exercises, movement of your body, you could do through dancing, you could do through mindful walking, any movement of the body where you are consciously moving the body helps in moving that energy. So energy work happens in various ways. One is, of course, you can move your body. So you are dancing, you're flowing. And when you're moving consciously, so when, what do I mean by moving consciously is that whatever we do, so you see, we may go out for a walk, but if I'm rushing and just walking, we're not really reaping the benefit of that walk. But if we're walking mindfully, I may not walk for a long distance. I may not walk for a long time. But if I'm walking so gently, so softly caressing Mother Earth, and I'm feeling every heartbeat of hers as I put my foot down, every step I take, I'm feeling Mother Earth, her heartbeat in symphony with my heartbeat, and I'm walking. That is a conscious movement that helps in healing and bringing balance to the body. So that is energy work and also movement of the body. When we're practicing yoga, again, uh, some people may be practicing yoga, but if I'm not paying attention simply because I've done some moves, um, it may not help me so much. But even if I spend 10 minutes, but consciously bringing my awareness to this movement, I may perform just one yoga asana. I may be just simply doing one mudra, one asana, whatever it is I'm doing. But if I'm doing that with my full attention, with my full awareness, and I'm tuning into my body, I'm tuning into the connection with my feet, with Mother Earth, my soul with the universe, with the source, my senses open, feeling, smelling, hearing, bringing my awareness to my body, to my breath. And then I'm dancing in the same way. The whole world can fall apart. Anything can be happening in the world, but it doesn't matter. I've got my music going and I'm dancing consciously so all of these things that we do for our body the subtle body the physical body the mental body emotional body and i'm constantly being aware of what emotion am i generating what am i feeling is it anger okay how do i release it <sighs> exhale and then how do what do i do replace it with love replace it with joy replace it with peace so when we're being constantly aware of ourselves yes initially it seems like it may seem like a lot of work that you have to pay attention to yourself all the time but yes initially you have to do that you have to put in some effort to pay attention to yourself all the time to be aware and it's simply by just closing your eyes bringing your awareness to your breath and just listening to you okay what is the word i'm using on myself to myself or to other people right what is it telling me release it replace it that's all you've got to do so Yes, all of those practices help in the overall healing. And healing is not separate. It's not just physical. It's not just mental. It's not just emotional. It's not just spiritual. It's all of it together, all four parts together. And the one that you don't want to pay, you don't need to pay so much attention is the spiritual part, actually, because that just happens automatically. If those three other three layers are looked into and you're practicing consciously then the spiritual automatically kind of happens so these four layers if we pay attention to all of these aspects of our lives and we can bring that healing and sometimes the physical symptom may be stubborn depending on what you have gone through if you've been carrying that for many years of your life in this lifetime you could also be carrying memories from previous lifetimes. So there is a lot of um, stories that we carry, soul memories that we carry in our body, in our being, in our energy field. 
And so it takes time to practice all this. But it's the enjoyment in that practice. And sometimes the physical symptoms may be challenging. It may not go away instantly. It may take time. But whatever time it takes, it's okay. As long as you're enjoying this journey and you're doing it every day, and then you're releasing little by little that stagnant energy, those stagnant energies, and you're helping in that. Um, so yes, that is a complete practice. So I hope that answer has helped, Suzanne. Yoko, how can I apply this to someone who is in pain who are filled with fear? That's a great question because um, I wanted to mention about that, that you can practice this for other people as well, for the people that you love. So that's a great question. Thank you. Um, how can you apply this to someone who is in pain who are filled with fear? So as such, all of us, each one of us, we all have our journeys to go through. So all of us, we have to go through our own journeys. We have our own lessons to learn. We all have to do it ourselves. And that's why a lot of people give up or, or don't even try, don't even come onto this journey because it is easier to just remain, um, you know, in an unhealed place. It's easier because healing takes a lot of work. So um, a lot of people don't even come onto this journey of self-discovery. But while each one of us have to do our own journeys, but yes, we can help others, definitely those who are close to us and everybody on the planet we can help the most important number one there are two things involved in this number one the most important thing is that you are helping yourself and you are in a place of love and joy and peace when you are going to help the other when you're about to help the other so if you want to send an intention or if you want to do something to help the other you must first have your energy in this mode in balance, in harmony, in love, in joy, in peace. So if I'm feeling frustrated, if I'm angry, but because I see my child or my mother or my partner suffering, I want to help him. It's not going to help because I'm only going to transfer what I am. We only transfer what we are. I am love, so I can give a lot of love. I am joy, so I can give a lot of joy. So I am peace. I can give a lot of joy, a lot of peace. So we all have to get into that place ourselves first to be able to help others. So this is a practice you can do. If it comes to your awareness that somebody is in fear and you want to help that person, you can sit in meditation for a short time just to close your eyes and bring your breath to a gentle breath, bring your awareness to your breath. And you send the intention out that you want to help this person. And then you visualize that you are helping this person. And you visualize this person is receiving the help that you're giving, the love that you're giving. And you must be in this place of love and peace first, and joy first in yourself. And then you feel that you are sharing this energy with that person. And you can visualize this person receiving and that's the energy you're sending out first. So whenever we want to help other person, another person, it is important that we always send out that intentional energy first. Because what happens is that in energy that I'm sending out when I'm sitting in meditation with my intention and I'm visualizing, that is like a ball of energy. Okay, this ball of energy I'm sending out so that that person and I, we both can step into this ball of love and light and joy and peace. We both can step into this beautiful energy ball and then receive whatever it is that I want to give you. I want to give you love. I want to help you wash your fear away because only when we have love, the reason why people have fear is because we are not connecting with the love that exists within us. That's the only reason. We fear death, we fear diseases, we fear all kinds of terminal chronic illnesses because we are not connected to the love that is within us, the love that exists for us, the love that is divine, the love that is who we are. So the only reason fear exists is lack of love. So if I step into love, 
that's how I can help this person so that I can inject more love into this person's life and his um, mindset. And then I can also show, share with him or her to step into more love and allow that fear to drop because fear is a stagnant energy, whereas love is an energy that will just come and power wash that away, that will jet wash that all away. So that's one thing you can do. The second thing you can do is if it's a person, who, if, if the person is somebody who's close to you, like your own child or your um, parent or some, somebody who's close to you or your partner, that you can actually physically lay your hand on that person that you can touch gently. You can do the same thing as I was sharing about doing it to yourself. So if a person, let's say your mother, for example, just an example, is um, suffering with a certain condition, let's say it's to do with her heart, which is causing a lot of fear in her because of that condition. You can lay your hands on her heart and of course always ask for her permission and speak to her first that you can do that because we must not do anything without the other's permission. So you can share your intention and then if she or he gives you the permission, you can gently lay your hand on that person wherever the pain body is, that part of the body, you can gently lay your hand and you can send your love, your intention of sending your love to that body part to wash that fear away, to wash that pain away. And that's what you can do. So I hope that's helped with your question. And um, the next question from Veronica is uh, not as a predisposition, but a genetic syndrome. Yes, I think I've covered the genetic bit before so I'm going to move on to the next question. Deline, Raja you mentioned bones heal and I'm trying to change my belief that I can heal calcification with divine love. Yeah, great question Deline, thank you. Yes, every part of our body heals and um, so calcification Calcification happens for a lot of reasons, as uh, many of you are already, may already be aware. Things that we have uh, unknowingly put into our body, uh, medications or um, impure water and all kinds of things that we may have put into our body unknowingly. But all calcifications can heal, can happen, um, can clean, be cleansed. So if you are washing yourself, if you are aware Bring your awareness to the energy that you are, you have been giving yourself. So what is the, what is the energy that I have been putting to myself? Has it been fear or has it been worry or has it been frustration? Whatever energy that I have been giving to myself, what is it? Bring your awareness to yourself. When you think of your bones, when you think of that calcification, it, come, it feels like a lot of frustration. So it could be frustration or whatever it is. Bring your awareness to that and help release that energy by exhaling out of your system and then replacing it with love. Sending the love to your bones, visualizing the bones being decalcified, flowing, body fluids, body fluids flowing, and also drinking um, very pure water charged water so when I say pure water I mean I know uh, most of us are not blessed enough to live next to a living spring that we can all drink I wish to live by a spring one day <laughs> so I can just drink that fresh water um, but yes water is a one of the elements that we have not um, been blessed with as in yes we have been blessed with by nature but somehow we have contaminated it unknowingly and so um, drinking pure water really helps in purifying your bones and your blood so if you can get the purest water that you can find and whatever water that you can find if you can purify it further by charging it with um, crystals with light, with love. You can even write, like I have, I, I purify my water every day. I keep them, my drinking water in a glass jug. 
and I stand a crystal next to it, a big uh, pillar of quartz, clear quartz and I also write the word love on it so you're always charging your water with energies of love and the crystal energies next to it. You can also place flowers, some flowers next to your water that really helps in raising the vibration of the water which is then when you consume it you can help in flushing out all toxins or calcification from the body so that is one of the ways that you can help with um, calcification in the body and of course visualizing divine light pouring down and cleansing you purifying out completely so i hope that helps um, your question suzanne what about alzheimer's yeah Alzheimer's. So um, that is uh, one of the conditions that in our civilization at the moment that has been diagnosed or has been labeled as something that we uh, cannot heal. But everything is healable, everything is curable and it takes um, a lot of practice. So what is Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's, uh, according to the medical information that we have, is to do with the brain. That the brain is not computing enough and the brain is not functioning well enough for us to be able to compute the information that we're supposed to and therefore the memory is not working very well. But where does the memory come from? The memory does not come from the human brain. The memory comes from outside the physical human body and the brain. It comes from our outside intelligence, our energy field, our source. So the reason why we get into conditions like Alzheimer's or dementia is simply because we have disconnected ourselves from that source energy, from that memory that we have from the source when we were created or when as as part of that light and that knowledge that intelligence that we are so it only means that we are disconnected from that so if i am starting to suffer from that then i can bring my awareness to it and start to connect hold that intention and open yourself and you can how do you open yourself is by simply saying i am allowing and opening myself to connect with the divine source that I am because I am part of that light, I am part of that divine intelligence I am no separate, I am no different so I am allowing myself to be open and connect to that divine intelligence because intelligence does not come from our brain, memory does not come from our brain the brain is only there to aid in a functioning of our physical body such as pumping the heart or moving my hands or moving my mouth and stuff like that but the real memory the real intelligence comes from outside our physical body outside our physical being it comes from the source and so when i open myself to connect with that intelligence to be one with that source then you can wash away the limited information of any condition such as Alzheimer's or dementia but it can be with somebody you love you know like an older family member your parents or anybody like that and uh, well we may not be able to go and help that person a hundred percent but yes you can still help that person again using the same technique that I shared by allowing yourself or asking that permission from that person as well and gently touching putting your hand on that person and for alzheimer's it's not in your head that you don't put your hands on your head but it's in your gut so you put your hands gently on the digestive system but it's because it's actually the digestive system which is responsible for that condition it is when the connection between the, the information that comes from a digestive system to the brain is disconnected, that's when things happen like this. So a lot of our physical conditions actually are um, genera are generated. Are, are, it happens because of our disconnection with our gut, our digestive system. 
Our gut walls have neurons, have um, intelligence. So they have a nervous system that connects the entire part of our body and to the brain. So when this connection is disconnected somewhere, that's when the flow of information is disrupted. That's when we get diagnosed as various conditions. So if you send love to the digestive system, it will help the person as much as you can help. And as I said, to be in a place of love yourself first, visualize um, that sending that energy of love and of peace and of joy to that person to help and do the same thing. You can lay your hands. So I hope that helps. Jenny, I believe that there are no negative emotions. They're all natural responses. Yes, I believe that our body gets and gets stuck and our body's energy gets stuck when we're afraid to feel some of our emotions and we repress that emotion and that getting energy unstuck is how about learning how to be aware of our emotions. Yes, absolutely. Inquire if we need some emotional healing of something we have repressed from spirit and learn healthy ways to release those feelings. I'm trying to integrate what I believe with what I'm hearing from you. Regardless, I think that sending love to my body is extremely helpful. Yes, absolutely true. That's why I said I do not like to use the word negative because there's nothing such as negative. Um, it's only in terms of vibrational frequency that it's higher frequency and lower fre frequency only to explain how frequency works. So when we have the lower frequencies, they become stagnant because lower simply means if I explain to you in um, something physical, higher frequencies like a balloon just floats. And that's why we feel good when we feel high. And lower frequency is like a bit like a big rock, like a stone, which then just weighs us down. That's why when we feel down, we say, oh my God, I feel so down because we get weighed down by this heavy weight. And that's why I prefer to use vibrational language as it lower, heavier frequencies or higher frequencies. So yes, absolutely right. I mean, there is nothing such as negative, every emotion, is part of us. They are our guidance system. And when we learn to use these emotions, so-called negative, as our guidance system, then we can learn to heal from that. So yeah, absolutely true. And even in life, there's nothing just negative. Everything that we go through, every pain, every suffering that we go through, are guidance for us, signposts for us, letting us know that this is what you need to work on and therefore we can go on our journey. So yes, Absolutely true, Jenny. Thank you for that. Okay, so um, Ellen, about a week ago, I dreamt that a very aggressive breast cancer was discovered in my body. Interestingly, it's right on the very spot where I do feel physical pain in my left breast over my heart. So I'm pretty sure it's a real thing. What came to me is hurt right now, but I'm wondering if you say anything more to say about this cancer, breast, heart, or an energetic emotional level. Okay. So um, the energy of um, related with cancer is to do with a lot of fear as well. So yes, you may be carrying some hurt from your past experiences, whether it's to do with um, experiences in this lifetime or your previous lives. Um, you can spend that time to bring your awareness to that, whatever it is to bring your awareness. And if you are dreaming of it, perhaps it's a fear that may be still playing a part in your subconscious that perhaps in your waking hours, you are not uh, being aware of and therefore you're kind of, you know, not paying attention to it. But our subconscious is such a thing that um, it's like a hard drive. It just gets, everything gets backed up there, the subconscious. So automatically backed up. So it's like an auto save mode. So everything is backed up. So sometimes if it's an emotion that I haven't processed within myself, because I haven't brought my awareness and paid attention to it and I haven't done the work that I'm supposed to do or I need to do, then that stays somewhere in my subconscious and so it plays a part. And dream state is a, is a time when the brain brings that to our consciousness that, look Ellen, you're not paying attention maybe, maybe you need to release this fear, maybe you need to release this hurt. So it's only an information, our guidance system letting us know what I need to release. It's, e it's as easy as that. And 
the the thing that we attach to a condition such as cancer is that we tend to think of the worst because um, that's what a lot of people think of cancer as that oh my god I'm going to suffer or I'm going to die etc that's the kind of energy that we attach the word cancer to but if we sit in meditation and if you have if you have brought your awareness to what is the energy that you're attaching it to is it fear is it hurt what is it where is it coming from and if it's something that you need to release you need to resolve do that release it with breath and if you cannot pinpoint to anything breath work is the best way to uh, release any energy so just release your breath and keep doing that and you may have to do that a few times not just one day you may need to practice it for a few days few weeks few months however much time it takes so just release and then replace it with for cancer it is replace it with I do not have to worry about anything my body knows exactly how to release itself how to heal itself how to let go and whatever it is whatever happens I'm fine I surrender and surrender is a big part of this you have you, we must learn to surrender to whatever the outcome is outcome may be good or bad whatever that we call it but there's nothing such as bad every every outcome is good so surrender to whatever outcome it is for my highest good and I surrender to that and I'm allowing myself to be washed with this love this energy of love and you can also call upon love energy from the divine if you wish and to help you with it from the divine realm and you can send love to yourself you can ask for um, help from the divine realm and you allow that love to wash away the energy and you do that until you feel that surrender really work because surrender also needs practice so when you surrender that's the time when you truly surrender that's the time that fear energy that hurt energy of cancer will completely dissipate and will go away from your body forever not just for this lifetime but for all your future lifetimes you will be healed forever for your family line that you don't have to pass it down in your genes you will heal your family line and that's what healing is all about it's not just about ourselves so um there are so many questions and um i haven't been able to get through to everybody and time is ticking and i want to just take us through a short meditation before we end so those of you who i haven't um, answered to please email your questions to me and i will reply to you on email and um yes A penny okay thank you <laughs> thank you so much yes so um, yes please do send in your questions on my email and um, I will reply to all of you each one of you so I hope that uh, all the answers have helped thank you so much and thank you so much for all the love and blessings Carmina nice to see you okay so um, yeah so thank you all and um, before we move on to the meditation I have a small request from you all that after this um, masterclass is over if you could kindly send me in some feedback um, about this class or how you feel or any any emotional feelings or any any experience that you've had during this class or how you feel or anything that you can share I would love to hear from you um, and I also want to use some of your feedbacks um, because I'm in the process of publishing my first book and um, I want to submit some of the feedbacks to my publisher so um, I'll be grateful if you can send me in some of that of, of your feedback so thank you so much for that in advance and um, yeah so I will I'll just take us thank you thank you Helena thank you so Helena thank you yeah so <clears throat> I will just take us through a short meditation 
to help us connect with um, the love frequency that we are. So, as usual, there's nothing you have to do. Just um, gently close your eyes and focus on your breath. Gentle inhale and gentle exhale. Slow and gentle, just naturally as it's meant to be. And allow my voice to guide you. So bring your awareness to your breath and your body. Gentle inhale. Gentle exhale. And just allowing your body to relax, dropping your shoulders if you've been tensed. And relaxing your jaw. And bring a smile to your lips. Bring a smile, gentle smile to your lips. When we bring a smile to our lips, it relaxes all our nerves, our vagus nerves, our parasympathetic nerves. Our nervous system is very important for our well-being. And many great teachers and healers have practiced and taught that we can simply heal by smiling. You can smile till your liver smiles. So just bring your awareness to your lips and gentle smile. And feel your body relax. It is important to bring our bodies, our awareness to our bodies, to bring into the present moment now because a lot of times when we are in pain and we worry and we fear and we get angry and we get frustrated, we tend to jump into a lot of what ifs and a lot of um, hopelessness and a lot of um, worries for the future. How am I gonna live with this pain forever? Or what am I gonna do? if it gets worse, or the worst case scenarios that we tend to jump into. So we're not living in the present moment when we do that because we are traveling out of our body into a time and space that we don't really know exists yet. Whatever pain that we have in the body does not have to exist in the future. And we can make this choice now. I can make this choice now. You can make this choice now. It's all about making that choice that at this moment, this now moment, I choose to connect to the love in my heart. I choose to connect with the love from the divine. And you can place your hand on your heart gently and connect with that love that powerful energy from your heart center and feel that washing away all your pain and your smile combined with your love energy your intentional love energy is a powerful tool for healing and when we practice this every day connecting with our heart center bringing that smile to our lips and breathing gently. This combination of breath work, a smile on your lips and connecting with your heart will bring you right back into this present moment, this powerful present moment here and now because this is the time that you can change anything and everything. Now is the time that I make the decision 
whether I want to continue to suffer or I want to get onto the healing journey. And sometimes healing journey does not have to be about uh, even getting rid of the symptoms. Sometimes the symptoms may remain in the body, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't affect you. If you can live your life, your body with awareness, that what is the emotion that I am attaching to this pain in my body or to this part of my body? And if I can release it, if I can teach myself to release it and replace it with a smile and love, with a joy and love and this peace that I have within me. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what is here, what is not here, because nothing is real anyway. Nothing is real. It is only real because I am thinking about it and I'm putting so much energy into it and I'm sending so much um, heavy energies, anger, anger and fear and hopelessness into this energy that makes it real. If I just let them go, if I just step away from these energies and if I just allow myself to be the pure love, tuning into the love. Yes, fear is also part of us, as love is. Hatred is part of us, as love is. Sadness is part of us, as joyfulness is. All of our emotions is part of us. All of our pain and suffering are all part of us, of our lives, of our journeys. And they all serve a beautiful purpose. But it is about choosing which energy, which frequency do I want to tune into. It is my choice. So it is like having two pieces of clothing. One is a pair of jeans that you don't really like. But you keep wearing it and you keep complaining and you keep saying that I don't really like this. It doesn't look good on me. It doesn't fit me well. Or I just stop wearing it and I wear the dress that I really love. It makes me feel good. I love the floral pattern, beautiful color. I feel free in this. I feel joyful. I feel like dancing in this dress. It's as simple as that. To make that choice that I want to tune into the love and the joy, no matter what's happening to my body, no matter what's happening to the world, I tune into the love, I tune into the joy, I tune into the peace. And the more you tune into these higher frequencies, you become that. Your body learns that. Your energy bodies learn to become that as your automatic mode. And that's what we're here to do, to learn that. A conscious automatic mode of love, joy and peace. And so the more I do this every single day, that's what I become. The more you do this every single day, that's what you become. We become what we practice every single day. If I practice anger towards my pain every single day, that's where I remain. If I practice love and joy and peace towards my pain, that's what I become. And the energy of love and the energy of joy and peace and light and gratitude and appreciation and forgiveness of compassion. All these beautiful higher vibrational frequencies are just so wonderful that they will wash away anything that may be stagnant in your energy field that you may have been unknowingly carrying they will just get automatically flushed out. And that's what we're here to do. As part of our evolutionary process, we as humans, the enlightened, the awakened, the aware humans that we are today, we are here to do this, to learn this and to practice this and to share this with others, to help in this spiritual evolution, 
this awakening, this consciously awakening humans that we are becoming, this luminous light beings that we are becoming. We are here to practice this, we are here to do this together. And we have gathered here today in this beautiful group, this beautiful community that is worldwide. We are sitting here together in this space, we are holding this space of love and light to send this energy to ourselves and to the planet and to everybody around us and feel that love energy sp spreading out to the entire field of the planet. That one aware being has the power to help himself, herself and everyone around and the entire planet. And this is what we are here to learn. And this is what we're doing in this beautiful community of love and light and healing that we are playing a part today to become this wonderful being, this powerful and yet gentle, gentle and kind beings that we are, full of love, full of forgiveness, full of compassion. And we have to turn, we have to turn all the fear into love because love is the only place where we can dissipate the fear energy. Yes, whenever fear comes, appreciate it, give gratitude to it, bring your awareness to it. What is it I'm feeling? It is fear, give gratitude to it. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for coming into my life. As you give gratitude to your pain and to your fear, you help the energy to dissipate. You transform that energy to dissolve and transmute that energy into the light. And then you fill yourself with love. And that's what we are here to do. As part of our evolutionary process, this is what we are becoming, the humans that we are becoming. We are here to learn this, how to make this our automatic, consciously automatic mode. How to become this, the beings of love and light. We are here to do just this and we are gathered here today holding this beautiful space of love, of joy, of peace, of gratitude of healing. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thank you.